man. <laughs> I'm glad the election is over. Welcome to the Netma Show, where we discuss news and current events and analyze how those things impact your everyday life. My name is Kellen, and I've got two things to talk about this week. Finally, we've got some non-political news going on, and congratulations to those of you that live in New York City or the DMV, aka the, the Washington DC area, because Amazon is coming to town, and I'd be pretty pumped if I were you. I would be on my game applying to every tech job that I could, even going back to school if I had to. And that's because Amazon has pledged to bring 25,000 jobs to both New York City and Crystal City, Virginia, respectively. And this is a total of investment of about $5 billion, which has been unprecedented, and both cities fought tirelessly to win the Amazon bid. And this is great for the people that live there because now you have another option for jobs. And on top of that, Amazon says that the average salary for each person working in those facilities will be $100,000. Now for those of you in New York, it doesn't sound like that much money. You still gotta figure out how you're going to pay your rent. But it's something and it's a good start. Amazon, it turns out, they were really looking for a place that had uh, easy access to an airport, easy access to highways and public transportation, a city with uh, a bunch of tech talent as well as a stable, uh, business-friendly political environment. So, eh, sorry Chicago. Uh, so ultimately, these two cities had what they were looking for, and Amazon picked uh, New York and Crystal City out of about 238 applicants. Uh, these two cities are offering a total of about $5.5 billion in local incentives for the company. And not all of this is going to be cash delivered to them on hand, nor is it going to be tax dollars lost necessarily. Both cities affirm that there are a there is a scale in place to where Amazon will achieve the full value of the incentives based on, for example, how many jobs that they bring to the area. So for example, if uh, they bring in over 25,000 jobs up to about 37,000 jobs in the Crystal City area, then Amazon will be able to exercise their full incentive values. And it's a similar situation in New York. In consolation prize, we're gonna give that to Nashville because you managed to snag 5,000 new jobs and while that isn't as huge as the two other cities, that's still incredible. I mean, if you think about it, that's tens of thousands of people that, whose lives will be forever changed because someone managed to get an opportunity to work with Amazon. And if we extend past that, this is going to generate billions of dollars in additional tax revenue. Think about all the people, 25,000 people in New York, the DC area, and another 5,000 in Nashville. Those are all going to be individuals generating an income that can be taxed. Those people will buy things that will also require a tax. Not only is there the benefit of tax dollars coming into these areas, but there's also the benefit of additional businesses coming in. Those people that are going to want to eat lunch at the new Amazon headquarters, they're gonna need a place to go to. So they're going to, to build new restaurants, they're going to have dry cleaners, they're going to have to hire new janitors. So this is a huge development for those cities and kudos to Amazon as much <laughs> flack they catch. I think it was a pretty good deal. It was a pretty cool thing to see and we can only hope that other companies can, can take other steps to grow their companies and, and solidify themselves in local communities. And while it was great news for these cities and states, not so much good news for Florida because everything goes nuts in Florida. Now, unfortunately, we have to turn back to the, uh, the midterm elections, but I think this is worth talking about. So Florida is having to go through a recount. Their elections were so incredibly close that it, by law, it's required. So anytime that there is a less than 0.25% difference between candidates, there has to be a recount. And the, this in itself to me doesn't seem like a bad thing, but everything since then has made things a bit more interesting. Uh, in Broward County, for example, um, a lot of blame is being placed on their elections committee, right? This committee is responsible for <laughs> running the elections and counting the ballots and led by a woman named Brenda Snipes. 
However, there seems to have been mishaps with the counting process, right? So in an example, Ms. Snipes included 22 false ballots and a batch of 205, which think about it, that's about 10% of a sample that could be off. So what kind of faith does that instill in us for the rest of the ballots. And so there have been calls for her to, to resign from her position because of just, in my opinion, general sloppiness in the way that she conducted her job, her department, that could cause harm to the people of Florida. Maybe your ballot wasn't counted. Maybe it was thrown away. Maybe it was given to the other guy. You know, we really just don't know. And so there are over 175,000 ballots in that one county alone that need to be recounted. And that's particularly important when, for example, the race between DeSantis and Gillum for the governor's office was decided between 34,000 votes. And to make it even closer, the race between Bill Nelson and former Governor Rick Scott came down to 12,000 votes. So if we know, for example, that there could be an error in 10% of the ballots that are counted in Broward County, which with 175,000 votes, that's 17,500 votes, that could swing these elections in either direction. We can only hope that they get all this sorted out because we do want to have fair elections, which uh, the candidates that the people truly did elect are voted into office. So this is not necessarily a laughing matter, but it is just kind of funny how it all, all crazy things tend to happen in Florida. And we, we can only hope for the best. I mean, this is huge for both Democrats and Republicans. This is huge for our nation and that this is a serious Senate race. Uh, that one seat matters on a federal level. So I am pumped to hear your comments on either of the stories that I've talked about today. Feel free to leave me a comment. Let's start a dialogue and let's learn from each other. With that, that's all I've got for you today. Peace.